Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Pivot Series. You know how you've heard about a personal stylist, hair stylist, all kinds of stylists. Bet you never heard of other plant stylists, because I do either. I was like, is this a thing? Oh, <laughs> it's a thing. And we're going to find out exactly who this thing involves today on The Pivot Series. I want to introduce you to Crystal Benedict who even admits she had to Google what it is she actually did. And Plant Stylist is exactly who she is and what she does. How are you, Crystal? I'm great. How are you? Fantastic. Great to meet you. Well, before we get into the plant styling, because I'm intrigued, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I got into gardening, I would say maybe like eight or nine years ago. And it was rough. I was told and plant. Gave up many times and jumped back on the bandwagon a few more times and somehow it worked. Well, yeah. you said like eight years ago, but somehow in my head I pictured you as a little girl going to school with a little water bucket and some top soil in your pocket just in case you saw a plant to revive, but I guess not. No, I got it about eight years ago, <laughs> but I was struggling with gardening shamefully for years, for years and years, but I bought it. I got it about eight years ago. All right. So what was life, life like growing up with you? Well, um, simple. I went to the primary school, which is nice. Still repping on my all-time phase. And, um, you know, I lived in a village. And everybody had a little garden because it was mostly chattel houses. So, you know, you got, like, bright colors. And then you got beautiful garden and all the different types of flowers and stuff. And I always wanted a child. I mean, up to now, I mean, with all these modern homes and stuff, I still would like a house model, a child house, and an amazing garden. So that was always a dream from a small child. And we had a nice garden growing up. Uh, we weren't wealthy or anything, but we had a really nice garden <laughs> that was built around cuttings. Because I, I think back then, you know, there wasn't much money to just go out plant shopping. I think most of the gardens in the village were derived from cutting. You know, you get a piece from this person. Yes. Yeah. You Mr. put it down. Left and, something on your veranda. Yes. Yes. Or you just walk around breaking off pieces of your own <laughs> and you bring it home. So yeah, that was pretty much it for me right now. You know, and that's pretty ingenious if you ask me. Next to you, you have this whole oasis full of cuttings that have grown into a garden. Yes. Beautiful garden. Wonderful stuff. Now, you know, most of us, by the time we get about uh, 15, 16, we start to think about the future. Where yeah. am I going? So what did your future look like when you were 16? It did not look green. I can tell you that. <laughs> Actually, when I was about 16, I, well, I should say when I was like 14 or so, into dentistry, would always watch these little videos and stuff. So uh, my mom and dad were like, oh, uh, one minute I would say I want to do this, and then I want to do that. And uh, when I finished school, a friend of my dad's, I believe it was a friend of my dad's, he was like, look, you should do a little internship at this dental office. So he goes, there's this short class, you know, it's happening at DCC, just right. check it out. And I mean, I really wanted to be a dentist, you know. <laughs> I was dreaming about teeth. But after doing the course and everything and then doing my internship, I barely managed to get through. I mean, I barely managed to have enough hours, to get enough hours because I was done. Wow. Yeah, I was done. I was like, I don't ever want to see teeth again <laughs> besides in my own mouth. I was I was just so done. And um, from there, I left with some friends. I went sailing for a few years. And I sailed all through the Caribbean, countless island hopping, blah, 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 blah. I decided, you know, I want to be a sailor. So I came home. I figured, you know what, I think I'll become a captain. And I roped my sister into this dream as well. And she went on to become a captain. But once again, the dream changed. I figured, I don't want to be a boat captain anymore. After about two years of sailing, I uh, did photography, I uh, shot a lot of celebrities, worked with a lot of uh, famous people and interesting people, and then started gardening heavily in between. 
And mm. somehow, I always came back to the garden and somehow I was like, I look forward to getting home to look at my plants and, you know, I then look forward to going to work and leaving my plants. <laughs> and it kind of grew, like gardening kind of grew on me. I looked forward to it every day and I, I really love it. So, Well, if we do the mental math now, eight years, we haven't flaked yet. No, we could be on to something. <laughs> Do It For Grantly is a production of Fortress Funds Managers. You can listen to all our episodes in all the good places podcasts are available, including SoundCloud, Google, and Apple Podcasts, or on our website, fortressfund.com. So what made you decide, if that's in fact what you did, what made you decide to put my eggs into a plant basket? Uh, about two years ago, uh, now, uh, I figured, I was still doing photography, but I figured, you know what, I am going to focus on what I love, like doing things that I love. See if I can make a business of it. I think a lot of people in 2019 were like, this is my year. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to do that. No, I was one of those people. Yeah. <laughs> 2019 was one of the worst years of most people's lives. Uh, we thought so until 2020. I was about to say, yeah, looking yeah. back, it I, was not bad. Everybody thought 2019 bad. was bad, but. Uh, 2020 you'll do yourself <laughs> um so i decided you know i would do all these things i love and try to make a business of them as i was working and gardening was one because whenever i post on my instagram page or i um or someone visits the home and they see plants they always be like i want that plant or whatever could you sell me this plant and i don't like to sell my plants i don't sell my personal plants so i'd always then have to go out and try to find one mm. and then um find a pot that would match or would suit their decor and put it together and then I'd sell them that. So uh, pre-style plants, that's what I would call them. And that kind of took off because then that person recommended me to someone else and then someone else and then the house calls um, started happening where people would be like, listen, this plant at my house is dying or these plants dying, could you take a look? And I'd be like, okay. And that is how it started. Wow, you're making house calls now to see yes. what's wrong what with the patient. <laughs> when last was it green? <laughs> what have you done wrong? What did yeah. you do? <laughs> well, so I, I guess I marvel because it might be a stereotype, but anytime I think of somebody can't wait to get in their garden, they're always mm -hmm. retired because they have time yes. to garden. I feel like I don't have time to garden, but you're at home thinking about gardening, you're away from your plants, you're thinking about gardening. Yep. Right but right. a lot of millennials are now, are just like this. You need to walk me through this. Yeah, a lot of, listen, I thought at first, you know, um, don't get me wrong, I was an out girl. I used to be out, I used to have a great time, I used to look forward to the parties. But somehow, as times changed, I just started to pull away from that and started enjoying, you know, my space and my alone time. And... It's not that, you know, you don't have time for gardening because sometimes it would be so dark and I have on every light I have and I out there picking and pruning and there's always something to do. I guess that's why the, you know, retired people always go to gardening because even though you came out yesterday and day before, you know, leaves fell overnight, something happened, the flower opened, you yep, <laughs> have pillars on your plant, you know, there's always something to do. So it, it keeps you busy and it keeps you from outside. But as I was saying, Lots of millennials are into gardening now. They're like, everybody has a plant page and everybody has a plant at home and, you know, a pretty pot. And they listen, these people are breathing over them. Okay, so here's a new leaf. Oh, my god. Every goodness. time you go on Instagram, this is a new leaf. And look, guys, look what's happening. And so it's not just, it's not just me. People are really, really into it now. And I guess due to the lockdown, a lot of people were forced to stay at home. Yeah. And now they want home to be a little nicer, a little greener. And the plants came into play heavily. Millennials, I misjudged you. I'm sorry. Yeah. So now we've got some greenery going on. But the fact that people will literally pick up a phone and call you and say, hey, Crystal, yeah. I'm having some issues here. Or, for instance, I'm redoing this room. And you're thinking plants. Now, I'm thinking throw cushions and blankets mm -hmm. and maybe a bookcase. Mm -hmm. The plant is usually, for me, the last thing on my mind, but apparently for a lot of other people, it's the first thing that goes in. Yeah. It's the one of the cheaper ways to uh, change a room drastically and, and make an impact, not just aesthetically, but, you know, for your own physical well-being. Because most of the plants I have around my house are air purifiers. They're easy to take care of, most of them, and they're beautiful to look at. 
Now, usually, if it's usually, it'd be like um, you know, if you want to do like a quick cheap change, you change your throw cushion, yeah, or just change your drapes, you know, and that's you know, a solid impact. If you're doing it in a kitchen, you know, you really pull up the backsplash, you put something else, or you paint the the cupboards, yeah. But when you're feeling for something more than the aesthetic, that's when the plant comes in. When you want to care for something and nurture it, because plants grow and you grow along with them. So you have it in the space. It looks beautiful. You get excited whenever you see a new leaf. You can't believe you haven't killed this thing. Can't believe this thing is not yeah. dead. You like, That's how I start. It. It's like it's breathing, y'all. Yes. <laughs> so this is like, uh, to me, it's like more of an investment, you know, physically, mentally, and aesthetically. So, yeah. Yeah, like watching a baby grow. Yes. Like watching a baby grow. Without Look at the this. pampers and the noise. Without yes. that, you know, because yeah. they're very, very <laughs> quiet. Are, and all of a sudden now you are what you have discovered was a plant stylist because you didn't actually know yes. what it is no. you were technically doing. No, I when I decided okay, you're gonna make a business of this. I was like, what are you gonna say? A gardener that comes to your home, like what? What am I going to, to say? Because what's the difference between a plant stylist and say a landscaper? Landscapers are amazing. Landscapers are magical because. As a, a gardener, a plant stylist, I deal with plants within containers. So because they're contained, I can manipulate like various elements, like the soil, the amount of water it gets, the text, the medium, like everything. But a landscaper, there's so many variables like the heat, the earth, uh, animal digging. You got insects that flying from all over the place. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, a contain a contained plant. This is inside. I can control this. This is easy. And then landscaping too, you got like the highs and the lower the plants. What's yeah. going to grow big? What's going to stay small? How many heads? Do you want some exactly. more? Exactly. Yeah. What needs more water, less water? What works best for this client and their environment? Mm. That is different. That That's is hard amazing. work. That is hard work. That makes what I do seem very easy. So hats <laughs> off to landscapers. Yeah. Yeah. But we still need you because I spend but most inside, of my time inside. Yes. Inside a patio, if you've got something in a container, you call me. Yeah. yeah, that's what I want to do. So now that you've figured out what you call yourself, yes. how do you market yourself? That's just it. I never really had to do heavy marketing. I recently just started running a few ads on Instagram. But by just posting my plants online, you know, and stuff, people just randomly started messaging, hey, I need help with this. And all these pictures would come in. What's going on here? Um, how would this happen? What should I do for this? Can you come and look at that? I need some help. So pretty much took off like that. That's why I created a website. So people could email me and it would free up a little more space in my inbox. True. Yeah. Because, I mean, I could imagine that once mm -hmm. one starts and people are like, oh my gosh, I love your plant. Where'd you get it? Well, I met this wonderful woman in Crystal. Yeah. And next thing. So this actually has taken you into some pretty magnificent homes. Yes, as well. it has. And I have enjoyed all of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Um, even if you've got a million dollars, you might still need somebody to come in and take care of your plants. From a million to zero. Uh, I do consultations, like light consultations and stuff. Even if you've just had your house built and decorated by whoever, I am, for most of those people, the last step, like after the decor is, is completed, mm -hmm. I come in and I say, okay, so this is what it is. I, you know, gauge the aesthetic and stuff, and then I decide what plant looks best here, there, whatever. And then I still have to go through a process of elimination to see what lighting conditions suit mm. which of these plants. So it's right. not just putting any plant anywhere where it looks good. It has to thrive in that space as well without yeah. stressing the owner out. Without stressing the owner. Yes. Because, because you see these thumbs? Stress. Not green. It's easy. They, they want to be. Right plan. But they're not. Yeah. <laughs> like even a consultation is like an interview process. It's like, you know, I come by, as I said, 
I take in your aesthetic, I take in your lighting conditions, mm -hmm. and then I sit and I have a chat with you. Like, how much time do you have? You know, how interested are you? Like, what's your experience with plants? And while I'm speaking with you, I'm just eliminating things, okay, uh -huh. from back here, blah, 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 taking things off that list. Right. Yeah, so that when I do, you know, find this plant and I put it in your home, it's easy for you. So it doesn't die quickly. You don't feel like a failure and feel like, I don't want to do this anymore. Right. Yeah, so, you know, I... Do that interview process, process of elimination, and I choose what would best suit you, your lighting conditions, and your aesthetic of your house. This is the Pivot Series, and we are having <laughs> the most amazing discussion right now, completely mind-blowing, with Crystal Benedict. And we are talking all kinds of greenery because she's a plant stylist, which means she <laughs> will literally come to you, look at your home, look at your aesthetic, look at your light giving, and say, hey, I've got the perfect light, the perfect location, the perfect plant just for you, and I'm going to make it easy for you. Do It For Grantly is a production of Fortress Funds Managers. You can listen to all our episodes in all the good places podcasts are available, including SoundCloud, Google, and Apple Podcasts, or on our website, fortressfund.com. Crystal has invited me back so I can watch her repot some plants so they don't just survive, they thrive. Crystal, how are you? See you again. Good to see you looking like a full flower. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what do we have here? Three different types of plants here. Uh, this is a philodendron Brazil. This one is a variety of Sansevera. This is very, very easy to take care of and it requires minimal light. So this is great. And this is the Monstera family, it's an ally. This is Pinatis Platita. Mm -hmm. And these three plants, although they could survive if you use a standard potting mix, um, you could pick up any mix and pot each of these in it and it would survive. But there's a huge difference between surviving and thriving. Like life. Um, this one work a little harder because if you put them in a standard potting medium mm -hmm. you know you may have to water a little less for some right water a little more for, for others. others right yes but if you tailor the mix specifically by eliminates half of the work okay well let's do it the right way first then yeah so we've got our scope and we've got our gloves yeah. and our trusty bowl for some potting mix right. and let's look at the texture of that because it this here beautiful. i'm going to bring it around to show you guys all kinds of things that you know what it looks like mother earth in a bag that's, that's what it looks beautiful. like okay so what are we scooping <laughs> yes, into so where you take one scoop you put it on here oh it's like a mixing bowl i was just about to say it's like, oh my gosh. Cake, right? okay but one some more one? okay <laughs> so if we were tailoring a mix for this philodendron brazil mm -hmm. i would have those few scoops and then i would put a handful of perlite oh but if you are a first time gardener some more the more the better okay yes but you don't want to overdo it i wonder if you could overdo it could you like, not okay. really not as a first timer okay because as i said before first timers like to nurture so they're always there trying to we do we're so very we very careful so about this more stuff. perlite the better okay because this means the less water that'll be retained in the soil ah well potting mix so this is how if i was a first timer this scoop i'm loving too Right, let's see. Give us some some more. more. Actually, you tell me that you think you would stop. Well, I'll tell you, I'm gonna dump the whole bowl in, but that's just me. I would have dumped the whole bowl in too. Well, then I'm gonna. You are correct. What the professionals <laughs> say. That's what I'm gonna do. There we go. Yeah. So I would use this stir this up. I've got perlite. I've got that potting mix. Mm -hmm. But and this is just, you know, a little added kick. Mm -hmm. I would add hard culture of charcoal. This kills all kinds of bacteria and fungus and stuff like that that might try to, to yep. okay. invade the soil. Charcoal, because I know that charcoal is supposed to be very good for the human body yes. as well. Yes. This is the stuff they don't tell you. But I'm sure if you visit any nursery or call Crystal Benedict, she can tell you exactly what you need and why. And she assures me that having plants makes you a plant parent and just like you would for your children, you'll start to do research on what works. But so far, this is working. So we're gonna take him out of here. Just gonna loosen up this potty mix a bit. Mm -hmm. He does not look great. Let's 
remove any leaves that look like they are damaged. Oh dear. Mm -hmm. But I guess it happens from time to time. And the other thing is, how do you know what's damaged from what's dormant? Ah, well, you could do the squeeze test, like say one of these. Not up there, but like down there. there. Come down till you feel like going flat. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. that is gone. Okay. Yeah. As long as it's flat or looking gray or looking kind of white. Okay. Then you know it's gone. So we can take this bad boy here. After you get a ways, after you get a ways, you just you rest him here to test him and see how high up you like to bottom. Okay. Now if you look at him, he's arching going this way. Now, instinctively, you know, you want to put him center, dead center in your pot. Okay. But let's do him like this, all the way to this end. Mm -hmm. So then hopefully, you know, when these aerial roots come in, they touch bottom and just snag onto the medium. Oh, it's bark and fiber. I'm going to actually use my hands here a little bit to kind of get some potting mix into this little scoop. Over and over here, we got to fill in these holes. Do we pat as we go, or do you just cut let it You fall? could. Actually, that's another reason why this point is there. You could use oh. that and kind of tuck it into those corners. Yeah, because I know it doesn't like compact soil, no. but I just thought, mm, maybe if we tuck it in a little bit. Look at that standing up by itself. Looking good. Give you five stars. Now I get five stars. So we have successfully repotted a mini Monstera and that is gonna go to one of you pivoters. All you have to do is follow us on Instagram to find out how you can be the proud plant parent of this mini Monstera. You have been enjoying this segment, I know you have. And what you really need to do is to follow Crystal Benedict on Instagram, look for plant parents. She'll pop right up, click follow, and your life will never be the same. Thanks so much for coming on board for another Pivot Series. You know we have more where this came from.